it's Shawnee. Welcome back. So today I'm in my office, as you can see. And I figured I would do a get ready with me at work because I don't think I did one last week. So I figure I've got to do one for you all. Um, so I just put on this Feeling Good Hyaluronic Acid Serum from Pharmacy. It's just a little sample size that I got when I bought... Um, their makeup melting balm. And now I'm going to go in with this NYX concealer as an eye primer since I insist on never bringing one. Um, and I figured I would just chat. Let's catch up. So last week you saw that I had such a good time with my bestie, Jessa. Like, just whenever we're together, or just in general, whenever we're together. Last week was the first time we were together. But every day we were together, I guess I could say, it was just like so much laughing and so much shenanigans. And that's literally how we are, whether we are um, in person or uh, texting or video chatting or anything, just lots of laughing. So that was good. My date last week was good. I um, think we're going to go out again this week. Not I think. We are. I'm not going to tell you much about it because I really am liking this one. So I kind of want to just enjoy it for now and kind of update you later. Anyway, so I like to like keep up on the news and such, the shenanigans going on in the world. So I figured I would tell you what I've been following lately. But speaking of following, <laughs> when you are driving in the DMV, you get like all kinds of, like you see all kinds of things, right? Um, so this morning I'm driving, I left home at 6.30, stopped and got my Dunkin' coffee, and then I um, got here about... 745 so that's actually not bad I created a little palette with some singles today these are two pretties for your face shades and these are two Terra Moon shades um, from their cosmic wanderer palette so let me get some brushes so I was driving listening to one of my podcasts and you know just casually looking around as I sat at a stoplight I look ahead of me and the car in front of me there's a lot of nice cars out here okay because you've got um lawyers and a lot of lawyers out here <laughs> government workers and like contractors and and all these people I don't know it's a whole bunch of people everybody does everything um you even see like diplomat cars and such, people coming to and fro, the embassies, all that good stuff. Now I look at the car in front of me. And you know, some people have that vanity plate. Now one I saw, it the vanity plate was IDI. -I. I don't know what that means. I was trying to figure it out, girl. Like what's IDI? -I? I don't understand. But the one that really took my breath away is the one that said Pooper. P-O-P-R. W-T-F? Is that, like, why? What is, why? 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 I don't understand that vanity license plate. Could you imagine, like, going to the DMV, not this DMV, not D.C., Maryland, Virginia, but the Department of Motor Vehicles, and being like, yeah, so on my vanity plate, I wanted to say pooper. Like, what? What? I would be like, sir, ma'am, person, what? Pooper? Like, it's not like scooper or, I don't know, pooper? I Somebody help me understand that because I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. But do you, boo-boo, do you. So that's what I see as I'm driving into <laughs> my office. And now the parking garage, now they're setting aside more spaces for certain people. So there was like a whole row that they've now turned into like for electronic vehicles. Are they electronic? The ones you plug in. So you can't park there. And then there's also now a whole row 
for the American Bar Association folks. I don't know why they need their own parking spaces. Um, and apparently because I asked. Um, and it was because, like, they just have so many people working in the building. We should have spots for therapists because this whole building I'm in is full of therapists. Like, you throw a, a rock and you hit a therapist. So... Whatever. So now I definitely have to park on the other side of C2 and then I have to take the elevator, which I'm starting to feel like a pro with the elevator. You know, we had some tough times at the beginning, but I think we're doing well. So I was like reading the news, watching the news, and I saw this story. That is one of the strangest stories I've heard in a long time. So apparently this like retired military intelligence person was like on business travel and they go to the Hilton. They go to the Hilton, one of the Hiltons somewhere. Hilton is everywhere. They go there, they check in, they realize that their TV isn't working. So they call down to the front desk and they're like, my TV isn't working. So the manager is like, okay, well, I'll come up and fix it. So the manager comes, fixes the TV, blah, 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 and everything's good. And the man goes through his day and then he, um, you know, goes to bed. About five in the morning, according to the news, about five in the morning, he feels something wet on his toes, the, the occupant of the room, warm and wet. So he like turns on the light and he sees the manager of the hotel with his toe, with the, with the occupant's toes in the manager's mouth. So this manager is sucking on this man's toes. Who, who does that? Like, and I think some people are like laughing about it. But when you think about it, not even when you think about it, it's just not funny. <laughs> like this was literally assault. And I think partly why people are laughing about it is because it's happening to a man. And oftentimes we don't take things seriously when men are assaulted. Like, imagine if it was a woman, everybody would be up in arms, rightfully so. And we should rightfully be up in arms about this man laying in his bed at night with his door closed, thinking he's okay in the uh, hotel room. And then he wake up in the middle of the night, I guess the middle of the morning, early morning, and somebody is assaulting him essentially. I don't know if you can call it sexual assault, but I don't know what other kind of assault it is, uh, kind of assault it is. Like, it seems rather inappropriate. So, home dude, the occupant, he goes down to the front desk because he's like, WTF are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And it's not like he can call the manager because the manager is the one who's doing it. So, he goes um, to the front desk. And I, oh no, to the security of the hotel. And the security didn't do anything about it. I guess they didn't believe him. And that's where I think some of the gender stuff comes in. And by all means, y'all know I am I ride hard for um, all genders essentially. But I do think that because it was this man and because it was like this big military, like former intelligence officer dude, that they were like, gosh, whatever, we don't care. But like... Imagine you are in your hotel room, sleeping, knocked out in this nice little Hilton bed, and you wake up to that. Would you not like, what? What? Ciao. So this man, the occupant, occupant decides to call the police, which is, I'm so glad he did, because if the security's not going to do nothing, like, what are you securing if you're not helping me? So calls the police, and they talk to the the manager the manager talking about he smelled smoke so that's why he went in the room ciao so now you're trying to come up with some dumbass reason for why you went in this room and messed with this man and you know it makes me think 
he probably done did something like this to other people and they ain't know or or they didn't say anything or like you think you're dreaming because I've had those dreams where something's happening. I'm, I'm thinking like, nah, that can't really be happening or whatever, whatever it is. Like you think you're dreaming, whatevs. But I think, I think the manager then got arrested, but it was for like something else. So I don't even know if anyone has really attended to this man who was assaulted in his room. And I bet you the hotel chain is gonna be like, we'll give you a night free. You know how <laughs> when you buy something and something's wrong with it and they're like, we'll give you 10% off on your next purchase. Nah, I'm gonna need a little bit more than that. Cause you done, you done caused me mental anguish okay like imagine trying to go back to a hotel room after that imagine trying to go back to that hotel chain imagine like you just don't feel safe you don't feel safe there's no way that that man is not affected somehow by this this ridiculousness that happened to him but it also made me think like y'all make sure that not only are you closing your hotel doors or locking it also put the little the little chainy thing on there and maybe get you one of those locks that you could get off of Amazon where you can like for real for real lock your door or something. I don't know if those are, are like safe fire hazards and all that good stuff. So definitely find out. But be careful. I'm like, I'm like really upset about it. Like it's not okay. It is not okay. And also it's important to think about how we treat people of all genders when they're assaulted. It's not just a cis woman thing. Ridiculous ass man. Ooh, he better be glad that he messed with the right one because somebody else would have beat the hell out of this man or something, picked up like the safe and threw it at him or something. So he a daggone mess. Tell me what y'all think about that. Tell me if you heard about it. What would you do? What would you do? I don't even know. Like, we all like to say what we would do, but actually you don't know until it happens because our fight or flight um, mechanisms kick in. And I don't know if you know this, but you can't choose which one you do. Like, if something happens, we could all be like, yeah, I'm going to fight that person, that mf -er. But when it happens your brain decides if you're going to fight, flight, freeze, whatever. But what do you imagine you would do? I would sue the hell out of them people. No, I don't want a free night. I want all my bills paid from here on out, including my therapy bills, because now I have to go to therapy for your shenanigans. Anyway. So the other thing, I like to get like info about stuff, right? So I was reading this thing about the best colors to wear to like ward off mosquitoes. What I learned is that mosquitoes are attracted to darker colors. Which makes total sense to me that like some of us of darker color get torn up in the summer months or whenever the mosquitoes are out because they like dark skinned people and apparently dark skinned clothes. They, they like dark skinned clothes, but I'm, I'm generalizing it to dark skinned people. So they recommend that you wear like lighter clothes or like pastels or whites and stuff like that. So if you're going outside and you have a darker complexion, girl, make sure that you wear some like pastel -y clothes or something so that you don't get torn up by the mosquitoes. The other thing I read was that there is like a county in Florida that's on like lockdown because of these giant African snails and they're calling them gals so we got too many gals here <laughs> so we got too many gals so we got to go ahead and lock this place down and apparently like they eat a lot of the agriculture let me see where's my phone 
because I want to I want to list what some of the stuff was because I felt like it was real like like the foods that they're eating I feel are just so common in like Caribbean cuisine what is it called African I mean giant African snail let me tell you about it Ooh, the devil is a lie. When I... These things... Hell no. Nah. He this is the size of a kitten. Oh. Oh. Y'all, don't look this up. Do not look this up because... Girl, let me tell you what it says. On Tuesday, an area of Broward County near Fort Lauderdale... That's where my ex live. I hope the giant African snails eat him. Enacted a quarantine after the invasive giant African land snail was detected there this month. The quarantine is like 3.5 square miles. And it's illegal to move the snail or any vegetation, soil, debris, compost, or building materials within, through, or out of the area without a compliance agreement. So not only are these snails there, but you can't move them, and you can't move anything that it, like, destroys. It says it does not prohibit people from leaving their homes, though the presence of a snail as big as a banana might do that on its own. I would not be stepping foot out my house. No, we're gonna have to use a carrier pigeon or something to communicate because no, no. And it's said to be one of the most damaging snails in the world. Oh hell, hell no. It can cause structural damage to buildings by eating through stucco and plaster. Oh snap, does that mean it could come through my house? Nope. It could also pose a threat to food security because of all the agriculture um, in Florida. It has one of like the largest agriculture uh, industry thingamajigs. Oh, oh, hell no. 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 Oh, hell no. Mm-mm, mm-mm. This is yet another reason not to live in Florida. <sighs> Ooh, I, I am not here for it. No two ways about it, girl. That's enough reason to move. That's enough reason to move. Remember earlier in the summer, they were like, I don't know if it was by y'all, but it was definitely out here where they were like, there's going to be an infestation of giant spiders and stuff. Y'all, I'm one to move if anything happens. A couple of years ago when I was living in an apartment, there was a mouse. I'm in the bathroom getting ready for church. On a Sunday, on a Sunday morning, you know, squatting on the toilet, taking a shower, doing all that stuff. Girl, when I tell you, a mouse came in that bathroom. Child, I was running and screaming so much. The mouse was sitting there like, are you okay, girl? <laughs> I ran out that, that bathroom, slammed the door shut. I had two doors, right? There were two ways to get into the bathroom. Slammed the door shut. I put like some pillows and sheets under like to protect the um, the sill, whatever that call at the bottom of the door. I packed my bag. I called whomever I was dating at the time and I was like, I'm coming over. And then I called the apartment like, you know how you can call the maintenance stuff after hours. And I was like, there is an emergency. There is a mouse in my apartment. And they were like, ma'am, this is an emergency. This is not an emergency. I'm like, um, I'm actually having a mental breakdown right now. So I would say that it's an emergency. 
child, I went back and forth with these people and I was like, I need to be moved immediately. Inmediatamente. I need to be moved. And they did because I was kicking up a scene, y'all. And people are like, you made them move you? And yes, I did. And what? And I made them move my behind. So, honey, I moved out of that apartment and was moved to another one that was much better, actually, because I had this nice balcony that looked over the pool. It was just so much better. And I convinced them to let me pay the same amount of rent. Now, mind you, they raised the rent every year after that. But, girl... I don't play. I remember being younger and my, uh, the house next to my parents, they were fumigating. You know, when they put that big old tent over it? Child. So I was home by myself and I knew something was going to happen. I knew something was going to happen. My parents had gone out. My siblings weren't there. And again, I was in the bathroom. The most like vulnerable place you can be. And a mouse came in there. Child, when I tell you, you must have, you would have thought I was an acrobat. I ran across the the tub, the, the tub, jumped on top of the sink, jumped on the toilet, and then like got out the door. Child, when I tell you, I tore up my parents' bathroom, tore it up. I pulled stuff down off the rafters. Girl, see, don't mess with me in these rodents. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. I was screaming so much. I was actually surprised that the neighbors didn't call the police. And when my parents got home, they were like, my girl, I don't know what to tell you. And the last thing I'm going to tell you about before I get off here and do my, um, what's that other thing? Do my rest of my face. Um, the Titan. Have y'all been following that story? The Titan is like this submersible thing that takes people down to like the bottom of the ocean where the Titanic is sitting. So basically you can pay $250,000 per person. I just can't believe people just be spending this money like that. You can go all the way down and like just take a look at the Titanic through this little porthole. And so some people, five people went on down, including a father and son, and they cannot find these people anymore. I think an hour and 45 minutes into the submission, submersion, they stopped communicating with the like ship on top or something. And they have, I think it was like 72 hours of oxygen left. And no, you have 72 hours of oxy oxygen available total. And that's if people aren't like panicking and hyperventilating and stuff. So they suggest that folks sleep on the way down so they're not like using up a ton of oxygen. Now, I think it was yesterday, they have 40 hours of oxygen left. And again, this is if people aren't panicking. I don't know who's not panicking down there. I would be. I'm under the sea and not in the cute way like Ariel. I'm under the sea and I don't know where the F I am. I can't communicate with the people upstairs or, or in, you know, above the water. And you expect me to not be panicking? Hell, I'm panicking just thinking about it. So hopefully they can get rescued and people are okay, but... Like, the British media is like, it's not looking good. The American media is like, no, 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 we can do it. So I don't know who to believe, child, but, oh, I feel so bad for those people. I would imagine that it is terrifying. And, like, if water gets in or something, like, the, the this vessel can implode, child, is this rich people stuff? Because, first of all, I could not afford to do that like in my wildest dreams unless I marry like Bezos or something like that is so terrifying that is so terrifying speaking of under the sea have you seen the little mermaid live action you have to go see it Halle Bailey is amazing as 
The Little Mermaid, Ariel, and Melissa McCarthy is amazing as Ur Ursula. Like, you just need to go watch it. Let me do the rest of my face, and then I will be back to say bye. So here is the finished look. My hair is so big because it has a lot of secrets. <laughs> Very mean girls. I think that is it. I have, oh, I've got a lot of time <laughs> before my first client. So maybe I'll try to get some work done. Yeah, I'll try to get some work done. Anyways, I hope that some of this was helpful. I also hope that you are continuing to take care of yourself. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment. Have you heard about these news stories? Crazy. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.